Hello, this is Annette Manius with Oasis Solutions. Thank you for joining us today. We are going to go over a Stage 100 Accounts Payable module. And uh, first of all, I want to point out uh, on the left-hand side our favorites. Now, you should look at our other video that was an introduction to Stage 100 to get a feel for what everything is on my screen. So I'm going to assume that you did that or that you'll go back and do it. So I'm going to go straight into vendor maintenance. So this is my vendor maintenance screen. A couple things on here that I wanted to point out. One thing is that I can change the uh, colors on these screens. So I have mine set up as, as white, but you could do a gray or any other color that you wanted on here. So that was just, a, just an aside to that. So I have my vendor number and here's my lookup. So if I do a lookup, that's my basic look up here. But if I said I want the address and information here on this vendor, I can easily go down here to the bottom and do a custom lookup. And I'll just call it new. And I'll say that's my default view. And I'll do next. And you'll see over on the left, I have all the information that I can put onto this lookup. So I can do address city. I think it already had zip on there um, and we'll say uh, email address and maybe we want to know, um, let's see, what else do we want to know that, about them? Form 1099. There's a lot of information here. Let's say last purchase date. When's the last time we bought from them? When's the last time we paid them? So a lot of information on here. Um, that you can put just on this lookup, and I'll and I'll show you why you might want to do that in a minute. So I can go next, and I can uh, filter. So if I said I only want to see uh, vendors that are in a certain state, you could do that as well. And I don't usually do that because uh, people get a little, you know, they forget that they put a filter on it. Uh, so you can filter as as you go. I'll show you that too. If I go next, and then I want to say, when I do a search by vendor, I want to do it always by name, and I want to do contains, and then I'll finish. So then, here's my new view, and again, I can get rid of these green. I just told it when I set this up that I wanted every other one to be highlighted to make it easier to see. Um, so now, I have my address, my city, my state, my zip is over here. I can move things around email address, if I go over here to the right, um, and I can make that uh, field shorter, that email address is huge, uh, so I can make that field shorter, I can move things around if I wanted to. So when I'm on here, I can sort by any of these columns, so I can sort by city, I can sort by state, I can sort by zip, so any of those fields I can sort on. And then you'll notice down here at the bottom, I can search my default is by name and contains, but I could actually search by whatever I want to. So I could search by the city or the state and it will bring up all that information. So there's a lot of different ways that you can get that information from the system. One of the things that once you do this and you have your, um, your information here down at the bottom right, I have an Excel button and I can export that out to Excel. So one of the ways that I've seen people use this is if they want to send some kind of a notice, uh, maybe an address change, something like that, to all their vendors or customers, same thing in, in, in the customers, you could set this up and then export that out to Excel and you have your list. So it makes it real easy. You don't have to do a report or do anything like that. So it makes it very easy. Also on this screen, uh, typically, I shouldn't say typically, but a lot of times you have vendors that are similar. So for us, we're in Louisville, Kentucky, we have a lot of companies called Cardinal. So it might be the Cardinal company, the Cardinal, you know, metals, it could be a lot of a lot of different things are very similar. So over here on the right, I have a button that says Zoom. So instead of me going and looking at each one of these going in and out of it, I can zoom into it and see if it's the vendor that I want and say, ah, no, that's not the one that I'm, that I'm looking for. Maybe it's this one. I can zoom into it 
And um, no, that's not the one I'm looking for either. So I can just go in and out of those different uh, vendors till I get the one that I'm looking for. So let's say it's Minco Computers. So that's the one I'm looking for. So while I'm here, I'm on the vendor maintenance. So there's maintenance where I can uh, add vendors or make changes to vendors or vendor inquiry also where you can give uh, people uh, security access to that as well. Uh, but this is your address information and all the information about that vendor. You'll notice here over on the right, I can do electronic payment. So I can put in their uh, information and then send the payment via ACH. We see more and more people doing that. So that's a really good feature uh, also. And then I can uh, hold payment for that. And I'm going to come back and talk about this credit card vendor here in a few minutes. And then also from here, if I want to do electronic payment, I can use the paperless office module and it will send the remittance to the vendor. It will email it out automatically and then, you, and then the ACH appears into their account. So it makes it really easy uh, built into the system. Um, and then I have an additional information here, 1099 information, if they're a 1099 vendor, uh, so, uh, some statistics, uh, uh, that accumulates just as you go. You don't have to do anything with that. In the summary, um, Sage keeps, Sage 100 keeps as many years of history as you want. So you'll notice this demo company that I have has uh, information back to 2011. So you can keep that information as long as you want, and it doesn't, um, it doesn't bog down the system or anything. So that's really nice. Then if I wanted to look at the history over here on the right, I have my, my uh, year, I could see uh, all the months. And again, I can choose which year I want to look at. And this is a little bit of a different view. So it's prior purchases, prior years, payments, prior years. So it's a little bit of a different view just by a toggle of the button. Then I have invoices. Whoops, that one doesn't have any invoices. Transactions and checks. Actually, I'm going to find a vendor, if you all don't mind, that has that information. So there you go. My computer room supply store has uh, actual invoices. So you can see the invoices on here. And again, I can get rid of these green lines or make them a different color, or get rid of them totally. But if I look at this, um, actually, let's look at this invoice because it has a zero balance here. You can see down at the bottom that it's been paid. So anything that has a zero balance. And again, when you set the system up, uh, you can determine how long you want to keep this information. It always stays in history, but you determine how, how long you want to keep it here on the vendor uh, record here. And any of these uh, invoices, I can double click and drill down and see what's on the invoice. The other thing that I like on here is here's my source journal. And then here's a button here that allows me to drill down into what that source was. So I have a lot of different information there at my fingertips. And then transactions are all my ins and outs. So that's all the invoices and everything that's been paid, uh, my checks. And again, I can drill down on that information and see what invoices they were paid. The other thing I like about this is you'll notice here if you're using the bank reconciliation module within Sage 100, then when you clear this check, it's going to tell you right here. You don't have to go back to bank rec to find that out. It's right there on that screen. And then POs. So if there's any open purchase orders, if you're using that module, you'll see that here as well. And again, I can drill down on that and see the actual PO and see the status of that PO. Up here on the right, I have a couple different things as well. So I can have multiple contacts uh, for this vendor, purchase address, a different remit to um, electronic payment. That's where we're looking at the ACH. Uh, you can see what items you've bought from that vendor and then uh, invoice inquiry. So there's a lot uh, of information there at your fingertips. The other thing that I like about um, these uh, screens are up here at the top, there's a little button that's called uh, memos. So I can, I can do any, uh, any kind of uh, memo that I want uh, about this. So let's say, 
you want to track, you know, when, <laughs> when they call you for payment, uh, not many people do that, but they could. So down here in the body, I can tell it, you know, what the date is and then what, what was the conversation uh, Mary called about the check. Um, then you have that whole conversation. And those memos can be anything you want them to be, and you can, be, it, you can have as many as you want. And you'll notice here that you can have an attachment. So I could say, um, you know, I want to keep track of agreements on here. So I can attach that. So that might be maybe my, my rent agreement or some other agreement that you have. So it allows you to keep all that here uh, on the vendor record. If you had something on the vendor that you wanted other people to see when they pulled up that vendor, I could say auto display always, and it would pop this box up in front of them. So that makes it really nice. A lot of people do that with notes and things, and uh, with Sage 100, you're able to, to do that self-contained. And again, I can, I can uh, minimize and uh, go on and do something else and keep that minimized at the bottom. I can have as many windows open as I, as I want to. And um, I'm going to show you invoice data entry. Nothing real fancy here other than, uh, you know, you put your vendor in and uh, the invoice number and dollar amount. And, of course, you have your terms code. Um, you can, here on the comment, you can put, let's say it's paper products. Um, you can also put, the, put this vendor invoice on hold. So you might say, you know, I want to put it in the system, but I'm kind of disputing maybe the dollar amount uh, or something you're not sure about. You can put that on hold that won't be paid. And then if I go to the lines and I can put the GL account number here in the comment that uh, that is here will post to the general ledger. So any comment, see how I brought the comment over from my, my header that will post to the general ledger on that account. So what we'll post is the vendor um, name, the invoice number, and that comment uh, and the date. And I can disperse that between as many GL account numbers as I want to as well. So that's um, that's just a nothing nothing real fancy there, but uh, but that's invoice data entry. And then uh, the other thing that I wanted to point out that that I really like on uh, Sage 100 is the reporting. So I'm gonna go into my aged invoice report. And uh, so I have my standard report, but if I said I want another report that just says 30 days, let's say it says 30 days. So I only wanna see my payables that are 30 days old. And so here I would say uh, 30 days, uh, age by invoice date, um, and so there's a lot of different options, and I can save that. So then anytime I go to print this, I can just choose what I want. So you can have as many of those as you want. Um, so that's that's really helpful, especially if you have, uh, maybe you have a boss that wants to always see everything uh, that in summary. And but you really like to see it in detail. You could do one uh, that says the boss on it, maybe, and do it in summary, and then you can see that. So any of these reports, I can print, I can preview, I can send out uh, via email to anybody you want to. So there's a lot of flexibility here. A lot of flexibility too. The system uses Crystal reports, so you can make changes to any of the uh, forms that you want to reports and forms that you want to. So a couple other things um, as far as paying uh, your, your bills. Uh, invoice payment selection, I'll show you how that works because this is, this is really nice too. So I would put my invoice day here, hopefully it's gonna select, yeah, I've selected a couple of them. So if I had a whole list here and I said, yeah, I wanna pay all of those, or I can hold my control key down and be able to select the ones I wanna pay. So there's a lot of flexibility there as well. Uh, very easy to, to do that. And then we are talking about before that you have uh, ACH built into the system. So let's say I had three vendors that were ACH and the rest of them I was going to pay via check. I can uh, do the whole check run. Um, 
uh, payment selection and do that. And it prints all the checks and then it generates the ACH file that you just upload to the bank. And then uh, once you get that done, it will send the remittance advices out to the vendors automatically. You don't have to do that manually. So it does that automatically for you, uh, which is really nice. And one of the last things that I wanted to show uh, is uh, vendor open invoices view. So this is really nice. It creates another little dashboard with all your open invoices. Uh, so this is done by invoice date, but it, I could sort any of these columns by clicking on them. Or I can say I always want to do that by, uh, by vendor name and put that up here and it will sort by vendor name and then I can do a right click and tell it that I want to sum, I, I do a, a summary by vendor as well. And then you'll see down at the bottom that when I click on one of these, it shows me down at the bottom what's, what's on that invoice. Also on here, I can do a right click and I could uh, add and, and take columns off of there. So if I said, I don't really want to see a discount on there, and I don't want to see the freight or the sales tax on that view, I can do that as well. Or I can add different uh, options too. This is a really powerful tool to be able to see the data. And you'll see that in vendors and uh, uh, customers, inventory, a lot of different places in the system that, uh, that you want to see data. So this is a really powerful tool. And I can do some filter builders and things here as well. Um, the other thing I can do is save that setting that I've done, or I can send this page by email, or I can export it out. So if I wanted to export this out to Excel, I could do that as well. So very, very powerful tool. Um, we see this used a lot with purchase order um, and sales order views. Uh, also customer, like open open invoices and things like that. So, But you can catch that on, a, on another video that we have. Um, so a lot, there's a lot of other features that I can't go into today due to time, but uh, we, we appreciate you coming and watching uh, this little section of Accounts Payable video. And let us know, please, if you um, would like more information or if we can help you anyway. Thanks again. Bye. Thank you.